overview at first, a little bit of a warning point in terms of combination treatments. Um, we are within a very rapidly growing industry in aesthetic skin treatment. Um, it was estimated that just in the UK alone the industry was going to be worth 3.5 billion by the end of last year and I understand that we did actually achieve that and it still exceeded. And this actually, this, this growth in technology, growth in demand enables us to actually treat conditions that we've not been able to work on before either as therapists or as medical practitioners. It gives us a whole range of new areas we can work on. For example, rosacea and pigmentation, two things that really we can barely touch, can now be very effectively addressed. So we can use these advanced technologies, we can work within multidiscipline teams to get some really great results and of course, from a business point of view, generate higher revenues and, and better employment opportunities as well. But at the bottom line of all of this is that we can get real results. The treatment, uh, the uh, conditions that you can actually make a difference to, obviously aging and skin regeneration. But how long have we been saying that? I've been in this industry over 35 years and I know that having worked as a, as a beauty therapist, there's only so much we can do in removing, uh, reducing wrinkles, creating new collagen and so on. But now we can absolutely make a huge difference and it's really a very gratifying um, area of work. Not only can we help to, to regenerate skin, particularly collagen and hyaluronic acid, as well as epidermal uh, skin tissue, we can also prevent further damage. Um, and prevention really has to be an underlying drive within your clinic. Um, it's a huge area, it's not an easy con concept to sell, but if you're not giving preventative measures, you're basically letting your clients throw their money down the toilet. Pigmentation by photo damage, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and melasmas, we can really make a difference to. And one thing that is often overlooked um, uh, but is hugely important to skin health and condition is the barrier function. That might be caused by epidermal dehydration or low lipidity. The epidermal intercellular lipids are often deficient and this allows for irritants and, and microbes to enter the skin and water to escape. So the whole immunology of the skin gets um, undermined. Other things, acne, not only acne vulgaris, but rosacea and cosmetica. Textual anomalies, open pores, scarring and density issues, vascular issues. When could we last treat inflammation? Actually, you really sort of dance around inflammation, trying not to make the skin go pink. That is, is actually no longer an issue. Many times we're trying to make the skin have an erythema because that's how regenerative treatments work. Um, however, it does incur vascular damage um, and uh, actually just to, to go back to that one, we actually can cause free radical damage through inflammation and I'll be explaining that in a moment. Inflammation literally creates free radicals in the skin. Talking of free radicals, oxidative stresses, whether you're getting those from your environment, your lifestyle, or intrinsically from within the body, they are going to cause not only skin degradation, but actually impair the healing processes that we're depending upon when we provide aesthetic treatments. Most of our aesthetic treatments that are regenerative are deliberately impacting the wound on the skin to cause it to rebuild and heal itself. And if your skin is not able to do that properly, not only are you not going to get the right results, but you're going to actually damage the skin. So we've got all these treatment modalities here. So many things. Chemical peels, laser, IPL, LEDs, microneedling, mesotherapy, cryotherapy, microdermabrasion, radiotherapy, injectables and of course topical actives that underpin all of these practices. Now we can achieve uh, transdermal penetration into the skin and make a difference. Um, and just to plug my next talk, I'm talking about that with Neostrata, how we can prove things get into the skin. 
Um, and then of course we also, as aesthetic therapists, work closely with the medical profession. And we may well be working alongside prescription only medications and uh, medical treatments. So all in all, we have an immense amount of opportunity and it can look like a little bit sometimes, I'm the same, wow, I'm like a child in a sweet shop. You've got all these different conditions and you really want to help the client's skin get better and you've got all these treatments to play with. Wow, it's so easy to get carried away and think I'll throw that at the client, I'll throw that and throw that, I'm making all this money. But actually, you've got to stop and think because what you can actually do is very, very easily overload that skin. You'll damage it, you'll cause deterioration in the skin, you may have a very unhappy client, and actually you can have really severe consequences of your overzealous and over-aggressive approaches. So what I want to talk to you about first of all is how to make sure that that skin is receptive to all these fantastic remedial treatments that are at your disposal. Think about what your pr primary aim is in, get in doing your remedial treatments. What are you trying to do? Actually, if there's one thing you're trying to do, it's to restore and maintain the skin health. Because a healthy skin is a, a well-functioning skin, is a beautiful skin. And actually, only a healthy skin can respond properly to those more aggressive treatments. So skin health really has to become the buzzword in the back of your mind. If we're going to look at the restoration and maintenance of skin health, yes, we want to correct dysfunction, we want to rebalance pH, lipidity, water levels, we want to um, create um, tissue repair, damage repair, regenerate cells and get the, the cells to synthesize the proteins that we need, collagen, elastin and uh, also the glycoprotein, hyaluronic acid. And then we want to prevent further damage. So these are your aims when you're looking at that client thinking what am I going to do for this lady or gentleman? So, the first thing I would ask you really strongly is look at progression rather than aggression. In my years working in the more aesthetic field, I have seen very, very aggressive approaches to skin. Really ablative peels and uh, laser and deep microneedling on an unprepared skin. And it's literally like asking the skin to go from zero to hero in a matter of one session. And then you wonder why you're not getting positive results and you're getting problems, adverse reactions, and skin damage. So this is a vital um, sort of term to keep in the back of your mind. Make sure you don't overload the skin. Adopt a layering approach. Add to your, your treatment programs each time the client comes. Extend the timing, extend the depth. Increase you know, the intensity of treatment. Add in a new treatment. You can build your program of treatment as the skin responds. And in that way you're working with the skin instead of battering it and working against it. It's really important. Support the skin before the, uh, the treatment. Again, so many times I hear people say, well, I'm training in peels or needling or whatever it is, but once I've got somebody to say they want to have the treatment, then I've got to ask for them for more product, for more money, they've got to buy a product. If I ask them to buy all the home care, I'll lose that client. You'll lose the client if you damage the skin, that's for sure. You may well lose your reputation. If you bundle the home care in and you support the skin during the clinical processes, you will be much more um, successful. It's vital, absolutely vital, when you are doing deep treatments. And really important, we always have to think about managing a client's expectations in beauty therapy, but in aesthetics it's even more important. People expect, because it's an aesthetic treatment, they're going to look 10 years younger in two seconds flat. The psychology of aesthetics, and it's a whole area 
area of study that if you do look at into going into aesthetic treatments, you have to be very mindful of is that about 50% of people have body dysmorphia in some level or another. And they will be expecting perfection or an unrealistic result. So, that having been said, let us now look at the integration of treatment modalities um, for maximising your results. So having given you the warnings, um, let's now just have a look at what we can safely do to be effective and also safe. So let's have a little look at this. Before you start, I want before we start to look at these deeper treatments, I want you to think about what the skin's got to do. Okay. So if you think about um, the implications on skin physiology of incurring inflammation. So when you're doing the laser, when you're doing peels, microdermabrasion, um, even some of the more aggressive uh, uh, you know, galvanics that some of them have just been seen, you're going to cause erythema. And in terms of aesthetic triggers, we're looking for that to happen. It's a sign that the inflammatory cascade is kicking in and that the healing and regeneration can start. But what is the physio physiological impact of that? I'm just going to skip through a few reminders to you. Um, this is just epidermal rebuilding, re epithelialization of an abraded skin, not even in this case down to the dermal epidermal junction. But we've taken off skin cells, and actually, what they're doing, all of these little, without going into too much anatomy physiology, all these little uh, tags here are cytokines um, and chemical messengers, neurotransmitters, telling the skin there's been a wound telling the, the growth factors and uh, the, the blood muscular network to jump into action, enabling the rebuild by mitosis and the re-epithelialization of this tissue. A really complex process. It takes a lot of energy for the skin to do that. Then you've got to rebuild the dermal epidermal junction. If you're going down to dermal level with, say, a microneedling device or a laser, then you are destroying that the tissues, the collagen and elastin tissues, that form a network like the stitching in the, uh, the membrane between the epidermis and the dermis. Collagen type 17, 4 and 7. You've got to get the fibroblasts working with you to rebuild that membrane, otherwise you're going to lose your skin adhesion. So again, it takes energies to do that and resources. And then, when you actually get down into the dermal uh, tissue, there's a whole lot more going on. You've got the not only the vascular inflammatory cascade going on, bringing blood and nutrients, rebuilding pierced uh, broken capillaries, but also you've got the melanogenic inflammatory cascade, which is why with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, you get darker markings where excess melanin has been formed. And this is much more prevalent in the Fitzpatrick's fours and sixes. So on top of helping to support all skin types and all skin colours, particularly Fitzpatrick's four and seven, you've got to be mindful of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And don't think that this only happens when you get down into the dermis. You might think, well, I only do superficial epidermal peels. I don't cause any bleeding. I don't do, I don't do those depths of treatment. It doesn't matter because what you have on in the skin cells and in the epidermis is a substance called arachidonic acid, which lives in the, in the cell membrane. And as soon as those cells, however superficial they may be, are damaged, they send out arachidonic acid. It's a chemical messenger that tells all the deeper tissues, Houston, we've got a problem up here. We're under attack, whether it's by the sun, as we can see here, or by a microdermabrasion, by a laser, whatever it is. And these cascades then start to happen. So, in one way, that's, you know, you, that's something you've got to be wary of. But think of it, it's actually a real plus point for us working at the more superficial levels. Because if we're clever with our treatments, we don't always have to go really down deep. We can actually instigate really good 
uh, regeneration with relatively uh, shallow treatment. And one key example of that is microneedling. The whole idea of having to go to one, one millimeter or 1.5 millimeter with a microneedling device has actually been really pushed to one side now. You get maximum regeneration and penetration of the product with 1.5 millimeter. So because the cascade will come down and most of your fibroblasts are at the upper portion of the dermis anyway. So there are lots of the skin to do. Even once it's produced its new collagen and elastin and its new tissue, that's got to mature. And collagen maturation and remodeling can actually take between a year and two years. So it's not good enough to say to your client, okay, I've given you a course of treatment now, off you go, that's all done, you don't have to think about it anymore. You've got to keep that skin healthy so that the type 3 collagen, which is soft and squidgy, turns into nice strong type 1 collagen to support that adult skin. And if you're not nurturing that skin, you're beating it down with, uh, with uh, free radicals, you're not giving it vitamin C, you're not giving it hydration, it simply isn't going to get the best from the treatment. So you're in for the long haul when you're doing any form of regenerative or remedial skin treatment. And you can see that the final part of the, the process of skin regeneration is 12 months at least on. That collagen type 1 has to mature into fully fledged strong collagen. So, not only that, and I, I hope I'm not putting you off here, but I need you to understand the importance of the support I'm going to tell you about. Age, overall health of the skin and overall health of the individual, their nutrition, the hydration of the body, and the oxidative stresses are all going to slow all of those processes down. So again, you're treating a skin that isn't properly prepared for those treatments and it's, you're trying to take it too quickly, the skin is going to suffer. So, what can go wrong? And I'm, I'm not going to spend too much on this, but vascular damage, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and hypopigmentation, free radicals, inflammation creates free radicals and shrinks and, and kills the cells. And of course that leads to premature aging. So without even thinking about it, if you overdo it, you're actually destroying the skin rather than helping it. So don't underestimate the dangers of over-treatment. And here are some sort of images of what can happen if you're too gung-ho with your treatments. Okay. And even cause permanent scarring and damage. So, having said all of that, how do we get the results we want to get? Maximizing results with combination therapies is becoming the mainstay of long-term skin health management. When I say long-term, therapists engaging in a longer process. It's no longer a course of six and off you go. The skin, if you were going to the gym and you wanted your body to be fit and healthy, you'd go on a diet, go to the gym, and you wouldn't think that after six weeks, that's it, I'm done now, I'll be fine for the rest of my life. Unfortunately, I'd love to think that could happen. But you've got to keep it up. So, first of all, let's repeat that mantra, progression, not aggression. Really important. So first of all, what I want you to think about is how you're going to build the skin up in preparation for these treatments. Supporting the skin's physiology, all those things we've just looked at. How are you going to help the skin to do what you're going to ask of it? So of course, the first thing you're going to look at is home care support. And the, the standard time for supporting the skin pre-treatment is two to four weeks. If the skin is not has not been well looked after, you've got to give it four weeks, a full cycle of the keratinocyte renewal to make sure that that skin is, is healthy and primed. Then you're going to look after it between clinical treatments and compliance with the client is absolutely essential and ongoing post-treatment support to support that tissue remodeling.
modelling. So, this talk isn't about topicals, but you're going to look at antioxidant therapy. You've got to reinforce the barrier function with oils and water content, the bilayer structure and the in intercellular uh, water content, the natural moisturising factor. And that will give you a strong physical barrier function. You've also got to reinforce the chemical barrier function and if you get the oil and moisture levels correct, you'll get the pH pretty much corrected too. You've got to make sure that if the skin is prone to hyperpigmentation or you're going to be treating hyperpigmentation, that you're starting the process of inhibiting that overactive tyrosinase, inhibiting that hyperpigmentation before you start to potentially trigger further uh, melanocyte activity. And of course, you must, must, must have a sunscreen, not just as SPF, but one which gives full protection from UVA. SPF only protects, only measures the protection to UVB. Um, and you must have both all year round. Otherwise, your skin will be bombarded with free radicals and it won't be able to do anything, uh, anything but fight those off. Okay, so getting to the interesting bit now, hopefully. Stage two of this preparation process are the procedures that you can start to introduce to your client. Okay, so she's come in and she said, right, I want a chemical peel. Or I want um, laser regeneration, whatever it is, you're thinking, I can't just give you this straight away. Your skin hasn't been primed, it's not particularly healthy, I'm going to overdo your skin if, if I go straight into it. But I don't want to say, but I come back in a month. What you're going to do is start to give treatments to bring that skin to a point where it's ready to have that more invasive treatment, that more regenerative treatment, more remedial treatment, um, and, and incorporate that into your programme. And there are two, three main treatments that I would suggest are going to be optimal for you. First of all, there are pills which you can use on a non prep skin, which are basically deep exfoliation. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Something like a 20% glycolic with a pH of about 3 is, is about right. That's not going to wound the skin, but it is going to make sure you've got a nice even playing field and it starts to get the skin working for you. We then come to nano current, which obviously I'm going to feature um, for this talk particularly now because A-Lift really does underpin the um, metabolism of the cells, all the cell, all the skin cells, not just epidermal, but fibroblasts, the um, uh, cells that produce your collagen, elastin, hyaluronic acid, all the other specialist cells within the tissues. And then also LED light is very good for re reducing inflammation and supporting the healing process. So your initial combination of treatments is something that's going to look a little bit like this. So already you're combining a treatment program, but we're taking it steadily. And each of these treatments is going to start that healing and regeneration process leading in to more remedial treatment. So, you're going to use these not only as skin primers, but as adjunctive treatments to aid healing, and they can also be given as a treatment in their own right. So, in terms of prepping with chemical peel, as I've mentioned, you're going to give a nice even um, skin surface. If you are going to do deeper peels on a non prep skin, you're going to get hot spots, and you're going to get a really uneven um, result. Um, it's going to also help to start to trigger the skin. It's going to get it warmed up, if you like, for further treatment. And these are just some of the peels that you might look at, the sort of ranges of peels that would be appropriate for that first-time client. Nanocurrent then comes along as a, 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 a treatment that is really going to recharge the skin's batteries. So we're looking at a skin now that is a bit, you know, down in the doldrums, you're not sure how well it's going to respond. So we want to re-energise those cells to make sure that they are fully active and they've got all the tools they need to respond 
positively. So nanocurrent is a form of electromedicine and it's a specific technology used in the um, just jump uh, used in um, medicine for over 50 years. Um, and A-Lift has captured that technology along with uh, three phases of microcurrent. You have two phases of nanocurrent, three phases of microcurrent. And this has the ability to stimulate the natural physiology of human cells. And that means that they then start to function healthily and repair tissue and regenerate the skin. And if you look at the history of A-Lift, you'll see that it goes back looking at degenerative diseases, kidney disease, injuries, spinal uh, issues of, of, of illness, eye, eye degeneration, uh, diabetes. It's been tested quite extensively on a lot of medical um, issues. And often that's the very great basis of uh, advanced cosmetic treatments. With A-Lift, it's high impact, so you're getting a fantastic result, but in a non-invasive way. It doesn't wound the skin. So unlike other deeper treatments, there's no wounding, in fact, completely the opposite. It's healing, reparatory. It's non-inflammatory, so the, you're not going to add to the erythema. In fact, if anything, you'll start to reduce it. There's no surface irritation or discomfort. You're not going to irritate or damage the barrier function of the skin. And in that respect then, as long as the barrier function is intact, the skin can respond much more effectively. So two phases of nanocurrent technology working at cellular level. The electrical currents used are so small that they're measured in billionths of an amp. Now a mi microcurrent is measured in millionths of an amp. So significantly higher resonance of these uh, frequencies. And this means that it can tune in to your body's natural frequencies. If you consider this fact that the natural resonance, the natural electrical resonance of a skin cell, or human cells generally, is 40 nanoamps. Absolutely, therefore, you need nanoamps, not microamps, to tune in more effectively to uh, the, skin's, um, the skin cells that, that we're working on. So incorporating the nanocurrent nano A-lift treatment can give a more intricate and controlled dosage of electrostimulation synced in line with each individual. And when you're working with the A-lift, the digital readout will show fluctuations in the reading of, of the amperage. And actually, that means that every sixteenth of a second, this unit is tuning in to your skin cells and adjusting itself to have maximum impact. So how is this actually working? Well it works on the mitochondria of the cells and just to take you back to uh, you know, your, your mainstream biology, mitochondria are like the power generators of the cell. They take in glucose and oxygen um, and produce heat and energy. And in order for that heat and energy to be carried around the, the cell, there is a, a chemical substance called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, which then is the vehicle that carries that heat and energy around the cell. So suffice to say that without ATP, you're not going to get very far in terms of stimulating or providing the, the cell with the, with the energy it needs to function. So if you think of ATP as the body's natural battery fluid, it's literally uh, the, the, the sort of energy source, the energy provider. What has been proved in looking at electromedicine 
is that through nanocurrents and microcurrents, we can increase ATP production by up to 500%. In doing this, we can re-energize the cellular cells at an intricate cellular level, increasing the keratinocyte cells, therefore, to replicate by mitosis, and to increase the fibroblast cells to reproduce collagen, elastin, and hyaluronic acid to strengthen the dermal tissue. The result being this increased barrier function, healthier, sturdier epidermis, and a much greater, denser network in the extracellular matrix in the dermis. And by doing this, you're going to get a smoother skin complexion and you're going to get, to get a, a, a firmer, more uplifted um, skin uh, visibly on, on the skin surface. And I know the ladies on stand at the B3 are demonstrating this and you can have a treatment if you can get in, because I know they'll be booked up, but you will actually see this improvement in structure very, very quickly. To add to our initial um, program then of combination treatment, so we've done a light peel, we've done our A-lift, and then we go on to our LED light therapy. Um, LEDs use the more visible end of the light spectrum, they're non-wounding, in fact they're very regenerative, and you may find them in overhead uh, uh, types, you might find them in a mask formation, or they may be handheld. Are very versatile in your, in your clinic. Um, and the work on the concept for those of you who are not familiar with, with light therapy is that different colours of, of, of light have different wavelengths, and those wavelengths will be absorbed into specific levels of the skin. So you can see that blue light is at this epidermal level and will kill the porphyrins in the bacteria, the acnes bacteria, so helping inflame acnes. The green light uh, is more for pigmentation coming down to the um, melanocyte area of the basal cells. Uh, yellow and red are more anti-inflammatory and generally regenerative to the skin tissues. And red light in particular works on the mitochondria as well. So with your A-lift stimulating the activities in terms of ATP, your red light can actually work with your A-lift to further increase the activity of that mitochondria and the re-energizing of the cells. So, just as um, you know, we've, the theme of this preparatory regime is gentle and therapeutic, we're going to penetrate the skin with very uh, non-invasive light, energizing, healing, anti-inflammatory, and of course anti-acne, because this, this regime may well be prepping somebody for treatment who has acne conditions. And that can be rosacea as well as vulgaris. So looking then further, um, when we're looking at the more in-depth treatments that we're going to progress to, A-lift uh, and, and the, the, uh, the light therapies as well can be used with laser and IPL, regenerative treatments, uh, chemical healing, microneedling, whether by dermal roller or by a mechanized pen such as the Dermatude pen. Um, and also can be used in conjunction with microdermabrasion. Uh, microdermabrasion triggers that healing response, the inflammatory cascade through physical abrasion, obviously, but the effects within the skin in terms of the healing cascade is the same. So using your A-lift alongside your microdermabrasion is going to make sure that that fairly aggressive treatment sometimes is going to be maximised in effect, but without increasing uh, the, the uh, intensity of that treatment. It can also be used in conjunction with radiofrequency. Radiofrequency particularly will work in firming uh, collagen and the tissues of the extracellular matrix, so anti-aging as well, 
and then you're going to add to that anti-aging and tightening effect by again re-energizing the cells to repair and regenerate the tissues. And then also with mesotherapy. Mesotherapy is the infusion of active ingredients into the skin by a number of different means. You might be infusing with electrophoresis, for example, your galvanic electrophoresis. You may be using sonophoresis, which is something I particularly uh, like. It has a very gentle but very uh, effective penetration. I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in a moment. Or indeed, there is injectable mesotherapy for the medical practitioners uh, to work with. We also use microneedling as a main way of mesotherapy as well. So, using ampules of vitamins or whatever it is, infusing those with your dermal roller or your dermatube needling pen, that can really infuse, uh, you get up to about 300% more penetration of product using a needling device with those active ingredients. But just as a note of caution, they must be configured for medical use. They cannot be just any old ampule or any old product that isn't designated. If it's, if it's designed to be injected into the skin, then you can roller it into the skin. But otherwise, it's not fit for purpose. So, what you will find uh, with this sort of approach in terms of managing the skin post-treatment using your A-lift and, and particularly also your, your light therapies and even cryotherapy to cool the skin, you're going to have a skin that's had a, quite an aggressive treatment perhaps but actually is calmed down and soothed and, and the, 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 the results are going to be much, much better. When you look at the infusion of topical actives in this case, notice this I mean, we're very familiar as therapists with this sort of ampule uh, system. Most mesotherapy um, products used in, uh, in aesthetics come in an injectable injection vial, medical vial, because that will tell you that it's configured for injection. Uh, because in order to draw this out by, by syringe, the needle goes through the top and it's a single use sterile unit. So, whilst if you're not using a mesotherapy device uh, with the, um, the glass ampules, if you're using it with microneedling, you need to have one that is medically configured to know that it's sterile and not fit for purpose. <coughs> okay, so mesotherapy and sonophoresis, hyaluronic acid antioxidants, retinols, vitamins, tyrosinase inhibitors, and anti-inflammatories can all be infused through, and actually, I think, um, I've also got AHAs on another slide, which is quite an advanced practice, but I'll bring it in a bit later. All of these sort of topicals can be used to, um, to, to, to be infused through non-injectable as well as injectable mesotherapies. Um, sonophoresis, I, because I want you to understand why I'm talking about sonophoresis, I just want to spend a little bit of time explaining what that is. Essentially, it's a process using ultrasound waves at a certain frequency, I think it's 25 kilohertz. Um, used to gain transdermal penetration by creating sound vibrations in the epidermis which sort of jiggles the, the cells into, uh, into line if you like, creating a sort of bubble which then rises up to the surface and creates a borehole and that borehole can actually then allow the passage of product uh, active ingredients through the skin. This particular technology is used and has been used for many, many years in things like physiotherapists, for example, use ultrasound to infuse pain relief uh, into, you know, transdermally. So again, grounded in medical 
practice and adapted for cosmetic uses. Um, again, if you use this technique with a lift, what a lift will enable you to do is yes, get that hyaluronic acid or those vitamins or that tyrosinase inhibitor into the cells, and then the a lift will trigger the, um, the, the mitochondrion of the, the cell to pre create more heat and energy so that those cells can use those ingredients, those active formulations to better effect actually helping the, the, the cells to metabolize the active ingredients properly. So this combined with A-Lift as well can be a really fantastic adjunctive treatment. Again, very non-aggressive, non very gentle treatment. I've seen this done as a combination with uh, microderm abrasion, then your sodophoresis with ampules, and then um, an LED. And I can tell you the results are absolutely fantastic. I haven't tried that with A-Lift, but I can assure you that would be exactly the same effect, because it, what it's doing, again, is stimulating the cells. Okay, so we're coming on now to the, the next stage. We, we've prepped the skin now. We, we're on to quite a, uh, a well-prepared, well-primed skin. They're using their home care. They're compliant with that. And you've measured the skin's reactivity, really, through that build-up process at stage two. So now, stage three of your treatment program is going to be really more remedial and progressive. So just a few examples for you, and you know, there are so many I could give, but first of all, microderm abrasion and a chemical peel. Now you might think, well hang on a minute, that's two pretty hefty treatments, bearing in mind we've prepped the skin now, but if you've got a heavy textured, acne, um, acne scarred, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation on a thickened skin or sun damage on a thickened skin, you need to, to really get down and, 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 and get into that. So the microderm abrasion obviously is going to clear the debris from the skin, get rid of the surface layers of um, keratinocytes. And then if you imagine that much as that's going to have done a pretty good job, if you were to look at that skin under a microscope, you'd actually see lots of fluffy bits of skin hanging around. So what you want to do then is put on a light chemical peel, I'm not talking about a deep one at this point, but something again like your 20% glycolic or 20% salicylic, no more pH than a, a low of, of say 2.5 to 3.5, though that's about as much as you want. But that is then really going to take that skin down to the next level, but without damaging down to the dermal levels. You're really at this point going to be probably going down to the deeper epidermis, the deeper stratum cornea, maybe the top of the stratum granulosum. But again, remember that healing cascade is going to uh, permeate down sending those cytokines and those neurotransmitters to the dermal tissue and to the keratocytes to reproduce. So you're actually going to achieve a really healthy, controlled, regenerative program. <coughs> and this is then followed by your third treatment. So A-Lift um, will then work with the microderm, the microderm abrasion, then your chemical peeling non-invasive A-lift will then make sure that those cells are fully receptive and working effect effectively to do all the things that you're asking them to do. <coughs> or, or and LED light. Another option is your chemical peel and your microneedling. Now you can never do this the other way around. If you think about it, um, although to be fair as an advanced treatment, you may well start to use at level, uh, you know, in terms of education, because that's how I think at level five we're going to be able to start to look at that. But at, at the sort of this stage of our treatments, we're going to be doing a light chemical peel first, start that um, 
process of, of inflammatory response, clear the debris from the skin surface, and then work with your microneedling device to really get into the deeper tissue layers, down to dermal epidermal junction, down to superficial dermis with a 0.5 millimeter needle, and you're going to start really getting those fibroblasts working. And again, then combine with a lift, which will give you uh, that extra boost to those skin cells, boosting the, the metabolism through the, the ATP production and getting a better result. And you can use LEDs to reduce any inflammation. You can, you can basically control inflammation post-procedure with an LED light. So it's something that can be added on at the end of any of these treatments. Um, mesotherapy, um, one of the treatments I saw at FACE this year, which is really taking this to a deeper level, uh, but it is the use of AHAs and, and peels of uh, various types, depending on your remit, depending on your qualification level, using peels with your microneedling device. Literally using that peel solution as a mesotherapy solution. Now this is something that you must only do on a skin that you've worked with for some time, that is resilient, that is well prepared, and you must really respect what that skin has got to do to recover. So you're going to space your treatments nice and widely apart. But if you've got that really sun damaged, aging skin, really tough skin, or something like acne scarring particularly as well, or even you know some forms of more active uh, acne, this is a really great um, combination. Um, and again, you can use your A-Lift, Nanocurrent, LED light, cryotherapy or sodafresis after this. Um, cryotherapy is going to be particularly useful if the skin feels very hot. And to be honest with you, after this treatment, it probably is going to feel pretty warm. So you can really bring the, the, the treatment down uh, with uh, uh, the, the cold of the cryotherapy device. Then we look at Dermatude Microneedling, which has got the, 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 um, the deliberate spelling mistake, not, um, with mesotherapy sonophoresis. And um, here you see we have uh, the Dermatude Microneedling device, it could be the same with Ebola. Um, you're actually going to be applying the device all over the skin, giving that porosity then for the further infusion of a hyaluronic acid, uh, uh, an antioxidant, retinol, um, growth factors, although you have to be very careful with that. Um, that's really going to assist in the infusion of that product. You're going to get 300% more absorption anyway once you've used a microneedling device, but then using your sonophoresis intensifying that result again make sure that that is a, 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 a medical grade product and here you have again your A-list nanocurrent and your LED lights to complete that treatment and make sure that the skin is responding to the maximum benefit what have we got next let's have a look okay microneedling and radio frequency this is a great adjunctive treatment for that lax, aging skin, the one that's lost a lot of elasticity, very loose textured. Um, there are some needling devices that actually incorporate radio frequency into the, uh, into the treatment as well, into the device. Um, so microneedling first and then using your radio frequency to tighten uh, the tissues. And if you're not familiar with radio frequency, I always think it's a bit like putting your woolly jumper into the tumble dryer. It tightens it all up. My partner is constantly being very helpful to do my washing and puts my jumpers in the tumble dryer. So I know how that goes. Um, with this, there would definitely be a lot of heat. So initially, I would use cryotherapy. And probably then I would incorporate my A-lift perhaps a few days later or a week later 
because with something like this you've got to allow another probably four to six weeks before you repeat this procedure. So in this case my combination with A-Lift would be to use these treatments on a monthly to six weekly cycle because they're quite invasive and then in between those treatments incorporate your A-Lift because that's really going to then work on the skin in the, in the interim periods. <laughs> Uh, that's a, an image of cryotherapy in terms of, of vapour, but you can also use the, the cryo walls which are now available. Combinations with laser and IPL. As with, uh, you know, peels and needling and so on, again, the laser light is used to wound the skin. In, in varying levels to instigate healing, certainly in terms of regeneration treatment. Um, we've got here a couple of examples, um, laser alexandrite, uh, 755 nanometers going down to the dermis, uh, endian or epidermal level, and then you've got your intense pulse light which can be adapted to your different levels of skin tissue. Um, your red light at 630 to 660 nanometers is working on the mitochondria again. So um, we've already talked about the importance of the mitochondrial energies being um, up there, the production of ATP. So this is going to work with your nanocurrent again to increase the keratinocyte fibroblast function. Increasing that cellular energy, more rapid regeneration of tissue, epidermal strength, dermal strength. And you're also going to help the permeability of those cell walls to take in nourishment and function. So red light, a very useful tool in your in your aesthetic um, portfolio. And then you've also got your 785 nanometer, which is going to help to work um, with the fibroblast more readily. That is actually in, you know, working in the dermal levels, helping the natural wound healing processes um, and triggering that healing response. Elastin, collagen, hyaluronic acid, and working on the long term again, long term skin regeneration. So again, a lift with this can work very, very well in combination and in synergy with one another. Um, Looking at treatment combinations, if you're working with lasers, you can use, again, very light uh, chemical peels to, to prep the skin. You'll get the better results if the skin is nice and evenly uh, prepared. You're not going to get spots or areas that respond differently to others. Um, and then your, your laser or IPL. And again, you can finish off with your A-lift to uh, and, and actually in between treatments as well uh, because again with, with, with these sorts of treatments you are giving the skin a lot to do so you need to make sure that it has that proper healing time four to six weeks so A-lift in between treatments um, so the phoresis and laser another potential uh, combination and A-lift um, and so quite a few diverse, I hope there's something there for everybody, I know everybody's got certain pieces of equipment or maybe looking at certain pieces of equipment and it gives you a varying view of what can be combined with what treatments but it has to be taken into account, first of all healing takes time, um, you're going to space these treatments four to six weeks depending on the level of wounding that you're giving. If we're very superficial then obviously I mean some superficial peels can be given once a week and once a fortnight. Um, but when you're wounding the skin with with anything deeper than that, you know, microneedling laser or, or, or deeper peels, then you've really got to give a full keratinocyte life, uh, life cycle for to six weeks. Six weeks if the skin is older or not as healthy as, as it might otherwise be. But again, if you're supporting the skin with your preparatory and preparatory active ingredients, 
your home care during the program and afterwards and your priming um, treatments that we've just mentioned, your A-lift, your, your LED, your light peers, that skin is going to respond much more, much more effectively. Um, so, um, just bear in mind that these are the treatments that really need that full healing time. Chemical peeling, really anything other than very superficial strata cornea. You need to think there are deeper things happening, you need to give it time. Microneedling at 0.5 millimetres or deeper. Really 0.2 millimetres and 0.3 millimetres are uh, non-invasive, they're hope rollers really. Um, laser IPL resurfacing or regeneration. Radio frequency laser therapy if it's uh, of, a, of an infused medic like with a needling uh, an injector. Um, always of course this is going to depend on your skin assessment. We mentioned that terribly much except at the beginning talking about how healthy is that skin. So when people say to me how long do I use that treatment? How often can I do it? How long can I leave a peel on point? You have to read the skin, absolutely all of these treatments have to be skin led um, and, and therefore skin health assessment is something you really need to be very well versed in. Just being able to recognise comedones and a few wrinkles and a bit of dryness isn't enough to be able to assess the skin for these treatments. So, in a nutshell, um, the main things that I want you to take away from this is that your skin is not a racing car. It cannot go from 0 to 60 in 10 seconds, so don't try and make it. If you try and make it do too much too quickly, you'll damage the skin, you can have really severe adverse results, and at the very least, you're just not going to get a happy customer with the best results you can. The only way to achieve that, in my view, is to, to use that mantra, progression not aggression. Um, take the skin through the processes, work with it, watch how it's reacting. Use your combination therapies wisely. Don't go at it like a bullet again. Think, wow, I've got all these tools and I can do all these things, and you'll end up overdoing it. So just respect the skin um, and, and, and treat it kindly and you'll, you'll, you'll do better.